So, chat GPT. It's, uh, it's causing a bit of controversy, isn't it? All this talk of evil robots and people using it for nefarious means. What are we to make of it all? I was literally downstairs in the kitchen a couple of hours ago talking to my husband about this and he'd been listening to a talk radio station this morning and chat GPT, evil robots, harmful technologies were the topics of the day today. So we were talking about it and he was like, you know they've banned it in Italy, right? So I took that as my cue that I needed to do a video about this because there has been a lot of worry and concern about it in colleges, universities and higher education, especially as it relates to dissertations. I've had so many people contact me about it, asking, am I allowed to use it? Can it be used ethically? Can it be used morally? And quick spoiler alert here, I think it can be used morally and ethically without compromising your integrity. I've got another video coming out on Wednesday which goes into a bit more detail and it's going to give you some examples of ways in which you can use it in a wholesome manner. But ahead of that, I wanted to put out this shorter video outlining some key principles to guide our ethical use of ChatGPT as dissertation students. I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley and I've been working as a social sciences academic for the last 20 years in UK universities, supporting thousands of students through their dissertations. In that time, I've come across some really great tech which has made students' lives a lot easier. Things like referencing software, Google Scholar, plagiarism checkers. But until now, I have never encountered anything quite like ChatGPT. I've been playing around with it for a couple of weeks now and it is scarily efficient and very human-like. I was asking my chat GPT stuff the other day and I was being really polite to it and saying thank you and hope you have a nice evening. And yes, I know it's a robot, but man has cost nothing, right? Anyway, let's take a quick look at the principles I'll be outlining in this video. Here they are. So the first thing that I really want to say is that it's there to assist, not to do. ChatGPT is a potentially valuable tool for dissertation students, but the trick to using it ethically is in how you're thinking about it, how you're conceptualising it. You should think of it as your virtual dissertation assistant. It's there to assist you. You shouldn't ask it to write your dissertation for you because that's not okay. And most of you watching this channel would never ask it to do that anyway. But I feel I just had to state the obvious there. You need to use it with the intention of enhancing your research practice and becoming a better, more efficient researcher. The analogy that I've been using quite a lot to describe the relationship between the dissertation student and chat GPT is very much like the relationship between a CEO and their PA. If you are the CEO of a large organisation, your PA is an absolute gift. They're the person who will help out with the administrative tasks. They do the heavy lifting with the routine stuff, the stuff that they're really excellent at. But a CEO would never say this to their PA. You know what? I just can't be bothered with being CEO today, so you just do it all, okay? That's not going to happen, right? And if it does, that CEO has no business being a CEO. <laughs> but when a CEO has a really excellent PA, it allows them to spend more time doing the stuff that they're good at, the stuff that requires their unique genius, the stuff that can't be replicated by someone else because it relies on their expertise. And this is how you need to think about chat GPT in terms of what it can potentially do for you. It can help you get way more efficient at the administrative, time-sucking, but not very intellectually demanding tasks. And that is going to free up time for you to apply your unique genius, your creativity, your critical, analytical and evaluative skills. Next up, listen to your intuition and conscience. Now, unless you are a psychopath, you have a conscience. That little voice in your head that pipes up every time you're thinking, feeling, planning or doing something that's a bit dodgy. If that little voice starts saying to you, mm, Is that really a good idea? Hey dude, that is not okay. Now should you really be asking it to do that? That's a little bit naughty. Then you really need to listen to it. Your own moral compass will help guide you through the use of all this new AI technology. Because believe me, ChatGPT is not going to be the end of it. There will be more stuff like this emerging in the coming months and the coming years, and it's going to create some moral dilemmas for you. So that conscience of yours, you need to listen to it. 
Another good way to apply the smell test when it comes to your use of chat GPT is to imagine your thesis advisor or your dissertation supervisor looking over your shoulder as you're typing stuff into it. What would they say? What would they have reservations about? Would they want to see you doing whatever it is you're doing? Maybe print out a little picture of your supervisor and stick it to the side of your laptop when you're using ChatGPT. Yeah, that is a bit weird, but you would be surprised at how effective it is. Next, stay critical. Don't become lazy. Make sure that when you've asked ChatGPT to help you with something, that you take the time to look very carefully at what it's produced and ask some critical questions about it. Whether you've asked it to explain a particular theory or help you structure a specific chapter of your dissertation, whatever it comes back with, don't just run with that. Ask yourself, might there be anything missing from this? What else might be important to consider here? How relevant is this to my dissertation or my assignment? And think about specific elements of your topic. Does that fit with what ChatGPT has suggested? It can be helpful to come up with some questions which all start with, but what about? Go and read some more academic sources about the topic you're chatting with ChatGPT about. And please make sure that you actually read them yourself, okay? Because that is the only way that you're actually going to understand them. The best way to use ChatGPT is to ensure you're using it in combination with your own knowledge, insight and experience. If you're doing a dissertation, you've likely been studying that subject for a while. So you have a whole load of applied contextual understanding that ChatGPT doesn't. You've been taught by professors who know their stuff. You've probably done other assignments in this area. You have a genuine passion and an enthusiasm for your topic that ChatGPT doesn't have because it's a robot. So please don't lose sight of any of that stuff and make sure that you draw all of it into your work. And lastly, get away from the damn thing every once in a while. Now, this is a little bit rich coming from me because I've just spent my entire Easter weekend asking ChatGPT about everything from what are the best hashtags to use for this Instagram post through how to clean up cat vomit from a light grey carpet to how to gradually increase the length and intensity of my runs so I don't give myself a repeat of the Achilles tendon injury that I had a couple of years ago. Yeah, I've been hanging out with my chat GPT quite a lot. I've, um, I've called it Colin. But there's more to life than chat GPT and that's exactly the same when it comes to your dissertation. It can help you with some stuff, so you should call on it to do that, but don't overdo it. Make sure you take some time out from it. And don't go running to it all the time with your questions and queries. If you're at the stage in your education where you're working on a dissertation, you've proved that you are more than competent at thinking for yourself, so continue to do that. And another concern I've got about ChatGPT is its potential to make imposter syndrome worse. We all get a bout of imposter syndrome every once in a while. We're like, oh my God, I can't do this. Oh no, I'm gonna get found out. Someone eventually is gonna figure out that I have been winging it for the past 20 years and I don't actually have a bloody clue what I'm doing. Yep, that last one is me. Hello, imposter syndrome, lovely to see you again. Not. Now, when you're feeling like this, do you really think chat GPT is going to help you feel any better? Nope. It's actually going to add fuel to that imposter syndrome fire. So take a step back from it if you think you're getting a bit needy with it and say to yourself, okay, brain, what do you suggest? Maybe do some journaling, like sit down with a pen and a piece of paper and start writing about whatever it is that you're stuck on. And you'd be surprised at how effective that actually is. I hope you found this video helpful and I have a whole load of other videos on all things dissertation, which you might enjoy too. And a couple of them are popping up on the screen right now. So go and take a look at those and I will be back very soon with more study tips.